Welcome, guys. Uh, welcome to chat. Uh, with me as normal is Gavin Rich. Uh, how's it, Gavin? How's it? How's it, Brendan? Uh, and, and our special guest today is Oli LaRue, Andre Henry LaRue, uh, and the better known as Oli, uh, a man with a lot of stories, so we're looking forward to having a lot of fun. Um, yeah, Gavin, you want to start off asking, you can start off with the first question. I was just going to say, how's it, Oli? I'm just the one thing that I'm a little bit disappointed in is you, you didn't bring your cigar. <laughs> No, I smoked them all last year at the World Cup. Eh? <laughs> and uh, no, it's good seeing you guys, good chatting again. And they are, no, we, uh, the cigars are always a uh, health risk at this moment. To get them is quite a big thing now. Eh? <laughs> but talking, about, talking, about, talking about the cigar, um, Brennan was a bit sort of like, I don't, I don't know if he's, I mean, how often he's spoken to you since then, but he says he's always been waiting for you to give him a hard time about the 2005 final, which which was um, towards the end of your career in South Africa. I know you went overseas after that. But, um, yeah, he was a bit concerned that you were going to give him a hard time about that. Like, tell us about that, that particular final and, and that whole sort of experience of, of being part of the Cheetahs team that, that was given absolutely no chance by somebody like Brendan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was a bit of a, a mistake. Uh, arrogance tends to come to a fall. Uh, and uh, what people don't realize, that's a god. It's actually a long story. But uh, that cigar uh, uh, was never meant to be seen as something. Uh, it was a it was a victory cigar because of a lot of personal circumstances in my life that happened the previous years, and uh, nobody knows. But I left the sharks on very bad terms, and I got very badly backstabbed by certain uh, individuals, and they wrote books about it and stuff, and they never told the truth. And uh, they seen as heroes, but in my eyes, they are cowards, and they are uh, uh, they not people that I would, uh, you know, and, and, and all that emotion that when I had to leave the Sharks nine years there, and, and it's a long story that everybody goes through ups and downs in life. So what happened is, here I pitch up in the free state, and Rassi says, but listen here, I've got also, I've got uh, via, uh, via prayer, and I need, need backup. So, so here I get an opportunity to go, f to go for, I think it was one-tenth of my salary that I used to get, because I had one year with no salary. And it was just an opportunity to play rugby again. So the, the, just to be able to play rugby again was, was such a privilege. And then I met all these youngsters, Yanni Duplessis, and, 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 and uh, just all these youngsters that were just so, so hungry and, and just brought this passion into this game. And, and they pushed you. And, and the hardest I ever trained in my life was with that laddie side. And the, and the Rassi was everything he did in the World Cup. We laughed. When we, lead, we had the same speeches. He had prepared. He was being prepared by us. To go against incredible odds, bring a lot of guys together from different, the oldest, the youngest. And we had one or two superstars like Jean Swift in the side. And then we had this whole emotion of, of we just won uh, against Border by two points. We just beat Greek West by two points. And what uh, um, Brown van Straten missed the kick in front of the poles. I've never seen Brown van Straten miss a kick. And he missed one in front of the poles. We beat the, so we just, we were the scrapping side. We were, we were tough fight. No matter where you are, we were a tough fight. And we weren't the prettiest teams, we weren't the best teams. And we had this Goliath uh, ahead of us. You know, this was this Bulls team. And what, nobody knows, I, my last game for the Sharks, I lost to the, lost to the Bulls on uh, 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 Loftus. And I got sent off where I shouldn't have got sent off. I saw guys that was guys seeing a Springbok legends just fold when guys run at them. Yes, and, and, and you were like this old guy getting backstabbed. And next year, Rassi lost to them. And then he lost to them again. So when we got to the fourth chance, remember we were battle-hearted, scarred, moored to pieces by these bullsides. Because right? Heineke had done something really special, good with them. And we took a lot of their tactics and we brought brought the good from them in and the bad we just used what we used to do and that game came and we knew it was going to be crazy out there and, and, and to have five people on the bench is already five props you know is that, that's already a, the biggest gamble you can imagine and Rassi and what nobody knew that it was this amazing everything just coming together in a puzzle like like and uh, we we had the, our last game for the season was against the Bulls but Rusty said, guys, we don't want to play the Bulls twice. We don't want to play them this week and the next week in the semifinal. So we're either going to beat them by five points or just get one point. So we're going to go for five tries. No problem, okay? So we played that semifinal game and we were running out of our own half going ballistic. And eventually when we scored our, fifth, our fourth try to get one point, 
it looked like we had won the game. The whole team was jumping up and down, cheering, but we lo lost the game. And then Rashi came with a plan, but the excitement it created in our team, because we were now in the semis against, the, we were the fourth team, we went the third team, we played the Bulls, we were playing the Stormers, went down there, played a game. Rashi did a big thing there, he didn't play us, and us came suddenly when we closed the semi-final, us was suddenly being seen around practice, and they were keen to play, but they were never willing to play the other games. And Rashi put him on the, uh, said, okay, come down with us, but I'm, and he didn't play. And that took big, big, big uh, kahunas because Us is a legend, you know, especially in the Free State of South Africa, and to not pick him and for Us to be humble enough to be willing to be the water boy there and stuff. You know, he tests you, Rassi, in those circumstances. And then what happened is when we got to that game, you know, they had a lot of uh, emotion previously in the year because of stuff that I said in the papers, they had big stuff. You know, it was just, you always felt these guys were coming for you personally, you know. And one thing you must understand, I'm a friendly guy, but if you come for me personally, I'm the toughest fight you're going to have because I don't mind, you know. And, then, and, and, and it was like all these emotions building up. And I, I was lying in my room, two o'clock on the Saturday. And now your nerves are there and everything's tingling and, and, you, and you've got your job, you know what to do. We're so well prepared, and, 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 but we're still facing this loft, this, with this amazing team, but this, this, all this fanatical crowd and nobody's giving you a chance. And you say, I don't care, I'll just be in the game. And I phoned downstairs and the concierge came up and I asked the guy, here's a hundred rand, please go get me some cigars because I'll regret it for the rest of my life if we win today and I do not enjoy this victory. So this concierge went and came back with five cigars. <laughs> okay, so I had them in my bag with my camera for if case we, we won this, uh, this game. And if you take the game, I watched it again the other day. For 68 minutes, there was we were getting bruised and battered and it was chaos. I don't know how we did not lose that game, okay? But suddenly a big incident happened. Kaplan made a call, Abana made a mistake. Boom, he was off the field. Suddenly we did our good old wide, wide, wide move. We scored, we kicked. Uh, Naka there was incredible as a captain. Uh, we, we, we could have gone for the touchline. He said, no, we're going because we're going to win this game. He picked the points for poles. They kicked off. We had a drive, a 50 meter drive that we practiced for a year. Never got it right. In that game, we got it right. We kicked the kick. We had Maya running for the bounce on the inside. It just worked. Everything just worked. Our guy, like a bumble flew, tackled that last eight minutes. Big Donnie the social ran at me, and I thought, oh, yes. And I was going for the eat, and Kabamba smoked him from the side out of my channel. Kabamba flew. You know, it was just it was just incredible. And when we were finished, we were standing there, and, and it's hard to explain to you that, that if you look this, watch this Michael Jordan video, just to see that what it means for a person that, that's given everything, you can't give more. And I sat there and I looked at this and I realized, yes, the, the chance for me to win another final on this field is probably close to zero. And it's such a privilege to do it with this bunch of guys. And I took one of my cigars and I gave it to CJ, to Yanni, to Vian, and one for myself. And uh, I said, guys, you don't understand. What we have achieved here today, nobody does that. And you must enjoy this moment and have a cigar to just enjoy it with me. And all of them said, no, 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 we're not going to do it. And you guys will remember old Dave with the long hair, the photographer, yeah, he's yeah. right now. He stood there and I looked at him and I looked at him and I said, here, Dave. He looked at me and I said, I'm never going to get this chance again. He says, probably not. I said, stuff it, give me a light. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and the privilege for me of the, all the emotional term to have a victory, to be able to smoke a victory cigar uh, on that a field with all the, and, and, and how things just came together and the emotions that went with it. It was never meant to, to, to give the Bulls a big uh, stuff you because at the end of the day, by winning the cup, we did that anyway. You know? But it was a personal victory and a, and, and a sign of the enjoyment of this massive uh, lead up that nobody, nobody sees you running on the 25th, 5th of December on Christmas Day, 6 o'clock in the morning. Nobody sees that. But I know I was there. I know what I did. And that took everything that that little team had. You look at that game, John Smith, Randolph and the Maverick, these guys were monsters. How they played against this team. And, uh, and, and, and that's why that cigar is, is in my whole, I've got nothing in my house. I've got one picture of me smoking a cigar with a curry cup. And uh, I know that will be the unique photo because what a privilege it was with that team to beat a team like the Bulls. And it was, it was genuinely, it sounds weird, out of respect for the, the battle that I had gone through against these guys that I rewarded myself uh, with the cigar. <laughs>
<laughs> I, I want to ask you something, Ozzy. Sorry, I mean, just on that, you, you say Mayor Bosman, because one of the strangest things about that season to me was, and if you remember earlier in the year, the Bulls also lost um, the semi, their first semi final in that against the Waratahs in Super Rugby. And they lost yeah, it yeah. also off a bounce of a ball. Uh, Morgan Tour in New, New Year, because I was still in Sydney at that game. Uh, also, uh, yeah. they missed the bounce of the ball and, and it went into Tour in New's hands and he scored. And then the Curry Cup final, almost the same thing happened. So did you guys had did you guys plan for that? I mean, did you think it would they were vulnerable there? Not at all. We were very lucky because uh, uh, Bana went off, off, you know. And what was sad with uh, Brian at that stage, he really thought he was untouchable, so he just went over the line at the wrong time. And then they had to play with uh, Furi at the back with Johan Root, so they were playing with two fullbacks. But Furi was very good in the S, so he would be behind like the the, the the line of scrimmage, and he would read the game, yes, because he was just. So he would take it, but suddenly he came running in from the left wing where Abana was. And where he would normally just afford, and, and, and you could see him and Roos, Roos missed each other because mm. they were like, and it was just the fight that had happened. But what we did practice, and if I can tell you how many times we did it against the B teams against under 20s, I kick off, jump, catch the ball, go down, uh, don't block the guys getting to the jump, uh, take the hit, start the drive, carry all the way. And when you come just off the 10 yards line, Fali Ulsich and then gets the ball, they kick it, they timed how quickly our wings, the ball's in the air, how far our wings ran, okay, in that time. And they put a little box down there and our back line practiced that over and over. So when Farley got the ball, he gave the kick, it was exactly the right distance for the contest to be in the air with everybody. And we, you, you won't see it, but we had the 12 running on the right. And the six, which was running on the left, and the winger going for the ball. So that if we get the bounce, either way, it's there, and the rest of us would mm. follow it up. So it was planned, but, you know, Johan Rich was so good in the air that you did, it wasn't our plan. It, it just worked out perfectly because we said, if we can then get in, it's a contest, and they can't get the ball, it could bounce anyway. We have to have one guy running on the right and one guy running on the left. And that day, it just worked perfectly. And, uh, you know, we just... Uh, it could have gone any way, but uh, I lost three before that. We lost three before that, before we won one. So, yes, guys, that deserves a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does. I was going to say, that to me was probably the biggest upset at Loftus since 1990, Gavin's favorite game. Uh, and and uh, definitely one that... I mean, I was one of the guys who wrote you guys off because I was writing at that stage for the Pretoria News and, and I'm obviously writing for your local paper. Yeah, I couldn't see the Bulls losing because they were actually, they were, looked unstoppable at that stage. Yeah, and, and, and they were, you know, if you just look at that side. But the one thing that, 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 that was interesting, and, 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 and I've learned a lot of that, whenever you get into a fight with a guy that's been in many fights, never ever think it's going to be an easy fight. Mm. And the feeling I had was that they just expected they were going to hit us with everything they've got and we were just going to, uh, uh, you know, get intimidated and walk, walk away, you know, just mm. absorb and not fight back. But unfortunately, uh, uh, different individuals in the team, myself, Yanni, CJ, John Smith, Austin Runt, uh, 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 Hinro, uh, you had uh, David, uh, um, very good at his best game, they brought a bit of calmness in the back line. But you had guys up front that, were, if you look at their careers, Michael Klaas, they actually went out and they've, they've, they've made an impact in world rugby. Mm. But they were, made a tough unit and, and they were fighting every game for survival. We were fighting for survival to win, to beat Border by two points. The Bulls gave them light. So it's not a hard game, but we were so battle hardened. And I think when this game came, it was just a, oh, that's cool. Let's just go back harder. And what Rassi did, what was amazing is, and, and I saw so much of it last year in that final, is he has a way to get you not to worry about anything except what you have to do next. And your biggest fear is that you don't, you don't back your teammate. If he can, if he, if he says, if there's a high ball, all you can do is you can jump as high as you can and catch it. But if you miss it, your teammate should have been behind you to help you, you know? Mm. And he had instilled that. Don't look at the scoreboard. Myself and Mark will look at the score. All you guys do is you focus on what you have to do next. And that came through three years of learning by actually watching the Bulls and seeing how they took the big moments and to take this bunch of young men and allowing them in that structure. Even today, if we get together, we still know the calls. We know what every guy has to do. We laugh at how hard we trained. It was really, uh, uh, and it, you know, for me to come from not having a contract, being one of the best players in South Africa and the world, to people not liking 
in me, you know, and then getting to this bunch of youngsters that just play for, and we went to our first, after our first game, I said, listen, yeah, guys, what time tomorrow morning do we have, uh, <laughs> do we have our re- rehabilitation swim session? <laughs> so they look at me and say, what are you talking about? I said, oh, don't we have like a, 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 re- a relaxation getting, they said, no, yeah, we drink too much. The guys need their sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm going to enjoy playing in this team. And then on Monday, if you're right, and you say, no, coach, I'm a bit sick of his race. He said, hey, 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 I know you party on Saturday. Don't, don't pitch up on Monday and say you're sore. If you want to have a good time, you produce on Monday. You know, and that honesty in that team, that the way that the guys just uh, worked hard together and were hard on each other, I really appreciated that a lot. Uh, and it was nice coming out of the Sharks environment to actually be a rookie, you know, to be a youngster in this team. And to see how the young guys always just, they, they like sponges, they spun the experiences you've had, how they how they see it. And, and what was amazing after that final, you know, we had a ticket tape parade and all that good stuff, you know, I think we was a best, we can't even remember much of it. But uh, like two or three of the guys came to me, but guys that were not like, really good players, but, but I said thanks for being for being willing to speak for us because sometimes you 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 say it with the way we feel but but we're not willing to say that you know mm. and that that was also I got a lot of respect for that because some people are willing to say something put their heads on the block but these guys backed me that when I said it yes we produced you know so that was that was a very 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 big privilege. Well, you you've bookended your career with 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 stints with the cheetahs obviously in Bloemfontein and you started off your career obviously in Bloemfontein, at a time when club rugby was still a big thing. And I gather from like having chatted to you in the past, and I can imagine it, that when you first arrived there, you were probably quite a precocious youngster. You worked as a, as a, as a, as a, as a bouncer in Bloemfontein and got a reputation around that, didn't you? And yeah. that was transferred, I think, into, into some of your battles with the sort of Bester brothers and the, and, and the old harder in, 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 in club games. Yeah, I was actually quite lucky there because uh, in my days, even today, a bouncer is seen as, as a bit of a, a dark horse, you know, and, and they have a certain level of authority. But I was the friendliest bouncer ever. We never had any fights <laughs> because I'd always grab them and say, wait, wait, come drink a beer. But they're always nervous because they never know what you're going to do. And I was not, a, I don't like bullying people, but... But it gave you a bit of that edge, you know, when people looked at you. And, and when I played, the best of brothers were, were you know, they were ferocious. The, the, the um, what do you call it, you know, the All Blacks, they, had, uh, they, they, were, they were rough guys. Huh? But it's easy to be a rough guy and never get hit. Yeah. But it's very tough to be a rough guy and allow yourself to be hit as well. So, so I always felt I was just, that there wasn't a lot of respect for the way that they were playing, the, the, how di- how they were dirty, but they were, they would wait for you to lie at the bottom of a ruck. So, so I personally didn't have a lot of uh, respect for that kind of player that would hit you from behind. And they, but hey, if you do it, you do it face to face. And one of the best things I remember, yes, you guys, well, it was 1994, 1993, and I was still uh, playing for the Free State on the 20s, and the Transvaal was playing against. Uh, 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 cheetahs and there was a ruck but this was classic <laughs> and you know all the guys but the, the game was much slower in that day but the next one in this ruck you just heard like this uh, 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 and you saw this whole ruck like going moving and the next minute you just saw Pete Bester getting up and running okay <laughs> and the next minute Kermis Visa got up behind him and I don't know what Pete did <laughs> Just running off the pizza. Yeah, you had this massive Kubis Visa chasing this short egg running with his uh, with his arms cut, yeah. And, you, and the whole game was going one way and they were going the other. But neither could catch each one, you know. So, <laughs> the funniest things I've ever seen this massive Kubis Visa running off the pit test. <laughs> So something happened at the bottom of that track that Kovas didn't uh, really enjoy. But to see them chasing each other, was it was like a mini week because both had these short sleeves, you know. So you had old Pete with these slow short sleeves and old Kovas. And uh, uh, in Afrikaans, we called it uh, Geniepsig. That was, they were very Geniepsig when we got to that, uh, to that, that place. And, uh, and when I played, uh, what happened is the, the rumor is that uh, we played a club game. And in the club game, uh, as we went into the scrum, 
uh, Pete Best uh, said, welcome to hell. And I said, I'll meet the devil, you know. But what people don't realize is uh, Pete wasn't the most English guy that you could say. So for him to say, welcome to hell, it didn't really happen. What happened, we were in the shower. And Charles Marie was trying to intimidate me, saying, ooh, Pete Best is waiting for you. And he phoned us and he was telling the youngster, welcome to hell. And he was you know, going on. And I looked at Charles and said, Charles, you know what? Tell him, come meet the devil, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and Sean was so shocked for this reply because I, it didn't scare me, you know. And, and, that's, and then it grew a bit from there to, to where they say it happened in that scrum. But Pete was actually, he was a tough oak to scrum against, you know. And, 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 and in those days, you, you, the guys I found then, him, Lewitt Miller, yes, they, and, and they didn't give you tricks, Tommy Lopesha. There was no helping the youngsters and stuff like that. They, they really, uh, you had to go out there and fend for yourself. Uh, and Johan LaRue, yes, they, they were, and they, they had no um, qualms of just seeing where you fit in. One of my first games was against Johan LaRue. Uh, it was about my fifth uh, senior game. And uh, I remember my dad still came to me and he said, yes, and my dad played for province in 59, 60. He said, yes, you know, Heinrich Rogers, he, he's a good player, and he, but he says that Johan LaRue is a bad oak, you know. So I said, ah, well, how bad can it be, you know, I don't know. And uh, the next minute we're playing, yes, and it's uh, one massive game. And, and I'm running, and the next minute, Johan's got the ball. <laughs> so I see it, so I go, hey, Johan, pass, pass. <laughs> so he passes me the ball. I grab the ball, I turn around, I run the other way, get tackled, go down, we score in the corner. Yes, and the next minute, I just feel, Oof, yes, and somebody smokes me. And I look up, and I see it's Johan, but my arms are under, I can't get loose. So what are you doing? He said, ah, and, he, and Francois says, Johan, lost him, I see youngster, and he rubs me in the face. And the next minute, I'm the eve, so I'm like, ah. Oh. A couple of words back, and I just see one look away, and he comes, but he eats me, but he smokes me. Yes, he eats my whole nose, breaks my nose. But as he breaks my nose, I get my arm loose. So as he comes, I give him a short one, I give him six stitches. So now I'm ready for this, because now uh, uh, waiting for the kickoff, because he's going to come running at me, and I don't care what's going on, I'm going to kill him there, there and then. That's done, you know what I'm saying? I'm bulletproof, yeah? And what happens, because this, like, he, you know, he was out of line, because he was stupid enough to pass me the ball, so he's still learning the rules. And luckily he was off, so I couldn't get my revenge. Yes, about five minutes later he came back on. So I told Naka, I said, Naka, you must watch my back, because this, this scrum is going to go now. So as we scrum, yes, so I'm scrumming him, and as I try and hit him, yes, he smokes me from the inside with his left. <laughs> didn't see that coming, yes, so we're trying to. So this is, but it's more uh, like a... It's a story effect. We, we're like wrestling more and I can't get shots in. And Naka comes along. I said, yeah, no, no, well, he says, you know, when I stood up, I looked right and there was Hannes Stradam and Rolf Strali standing there. <laughs> and I looked at them and the Rolf said, no, no, leave this youngster. Let's see what he can do. <laughs> and, uh, and that's how they tested you in those days, you know, to see what you can do. And, and at the end of that, that's the only way that you, you gain respect is by playing against these guys week in, week out, proving to them you're not a little arrogant, that you, you can deliver on, on, on what you say. And, and, uh, and that was one of the, my, my favorite uh, uh, games, not favorite games, it was a tough game, it was a hard learning curve. And what was amazing, uh, probably about 10 years later, we played in Eastern Trans, the Old West Transfall, that Benoni Stadium. Sharks, yes, myself, Chris so AJ Finter, Mark Andrews, Steve Atherton, you know, Steve wasn't playing, but it was big back in. Who's was playing tight end against me? Johan LaRue. So, 10 years later, this is the day, Johan, your reckonings come. So, I tell Chris so this whole story. Yes, so we're going and we're scrumming, and I get uh, Johan in a one ruck, but I clean him, and I say, Johan, today you're going to get hurt on this field, my friend. And now I'm a 20, what, 28 years old. I'm in the prime of my career. So, Johan physically he hasn't got a chance there. But it's tough. So the next minute, as we're scrumming, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I just I get my hip slightly out, you know, I just hear, poof, poof, on the inside. And I look, and Chris hit him. So he's watching me, and he opens it. So Chris hit him. She stitches on the cheek. So why you want to hit him? I don't know. I thought he was going to hit you, so I hit him back first. I said, okay, yeah, there you are. comes off. He comes back on the field again. Yes, next time we go, as I go, poof, poof. Chris hits him again. He goes off again. I said, what are you doing? He says, no, man, I just thought I'd hit him for you so long. Don't worry. So he went off about three or four times. Every time, Chris, I never got hold of him, but Chris gave him a, a you know, he, 
had a nice little shiner there on his eye. And as we were standing outside, there was like these gates at the guy. You saw this big 320 diesel, the old models, driving up. And you see now it's Johan, and so you're a bit nervous because he's, he's, he's known to be a bit of a loose cannon. And he rolls down the window and, and he says, hey, Johan, you know, how's it going? He says, no, well done, guys. You know, good game. He says, but uh, it's good to see that the game's still being played the way it should by some guys. He says, enjoy your evening. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that was the way you sorted your stuff out there and, and you went on, you know. And it was sometimes guys would get badly hurt, but it was never that bad. But uh, we wouldn't have scums just falling and stuff. The guys would to get hurt when the scum falls. <laughs> I'll keep it clean. And, uh, but that was an amazing story of how the, the generation came. I got initiated by a guy like Johan, and then he got basically, uh, he got his payback way back, but he wasn't angry about it. He said, I'm just so glad to see there's still guys playing the game should be the way it should be played. It was a form of respect there, you know.